We are very pleased to announce the release of a new book, Terrain Therapy. This has been months in the making and brings back to life the important writings of Dr. Ulrich Williams. For us personally, it has been one of the most important factors shaping our understanding of health and the fundamental errors of the medical system. If there is one book that I always come back to, it's this one, my guidebook to health, life and spirituality. For those of you that don't want to wait until the end of this video to find out how to secure your own copy, you can head to drsambailey.com forward slash terrain therapy right now to see the different options. In the meantime, to give you an idea of what this book is all about, I'll read my foreword for this treasure trove of health wisdom. Terrain Therapy Foreword by Dr. Samantha Bailey I first discovered Dr. Ulrich Williams, 1819-1971 in 2021. A dear friend, Simon Williams, whose husband is distantly related to Dr. Williams, sent me a copy of New Zealand's greatest doctor, Ulrich Williams of Wanganui, a surgeon who became a naturopath. The booklet was published in 1998 by Brenda Sampson, who had been a former patient of Dr. Williams in the 1940s. Simon met the 83-year-old Brenda in 2000 and described her as a picture of health, so bright-eyed and sharp in mind, a tall and beautiful lady, and very straight up, both physically and in her manner. However, Brenda never mentioned her publication during that meeting, and it was not until several years later that Simon came across a copy of New Zealand's Greatest Doctor and made the connection. The book instantly struck a chord with me on a number of levels. The first was how concise Dr. Williams was with his explanations of health and disease. For example, he would say, all disease comes from one of two places, either an unhealthy way of life or else it comes from unhappiness in the mind and spirit. This was in striking contrast to my allopathic medical training where I was bombarded with the names of hundreds of diseases many of which appeared to be able to strike unsuspecting victims at will. For most of these disease entities, the allopathic system postulates a single cause in a specific treatment protocol. Dr. Williams saw the folly of treating people this way. There are no specific entities as such. There are only the manifested symptoms and conditions of the body. He did not believe in germ theory and Louis Pasteur's claims. Instead, Dr. Williams lent his support to the terrain theorist Antoine Bouchamp, and stated, it isn't the germs that matter, but that upon which they prey. Dr. Williams placed a great deal of importance on the psychological and spiritual realms. He was clear that a healthy body was ultimately dependent on a healthy mind and a resolute connection on the spiritual plane. Deficiencies in this department were not only detrimental to health, but sometimes fatal. As he would explain, if a person is very unhappy and can't find a way out of the unhappiness, the body will create a way out through illness. Dr. Williams had no hubris when it came to the abilities of doctors and once said to Brenda Sampson, I didn't cure you, only God can heal. Actually what I did was to teach you how to cure yourself and that will be useful to you all your life. He had not always been that way. Earlier in his career, the dashing obstetrician surgeon had a reputation of being a playboy doctor, more interested in sports, women and booze than his patients. As one friend put it, he would rush them through the surgery, filling them up with sedatives and drugs just as quickly as he could, so that he might have more time for his pleasures. However, Dr. Williams reached a crisis point in 1931 and became horrified with the allopathic remedies that he had been dispensing for material profits. He knew it was time to find a new path and over the next few years gradually worked out his basis for healthy living, right eating, right thinking and right living with an appreciation of the relationship between body, mind and spirit. He became appalled at the number of operations being done and resolved to do no more surgery. He made detailed studies on the processing of food, the health and methods of fertilization of the soil, diet and psychology. He concluded that the excessive use of chemical pesticides and fertilizers were endangering human health. In this regard, he was years ahead of even Rachel Carson, who blew the whistle on DDT and other environmental chemical contaminants in the 1960s. 
In New Zealand's Greatest Doctor, Brenda Sampson mentioned some of Dr. Williams' publications, but they had all been out of print for many years. After an extensive search, I managed to purchase a 1939 fourth edition of Hints on Healthy Living from a Wellington bookshop. The book was another great revelation, and I was unable to put it down. His sentences can appear simple, and yet they are often powerful aphorisms. For example, don't fight disease, but practice good health, is one of my guiding principles. Dr. Williams published the 83-page first edition of Hints on Healthy Living in 1934. By the fourth edition, the one I hold, it had reached 300 pages, with well over 100 of the pages comprising recipes. There was a fifth edition of the book in 1949, which came with the new title, Health and Healing in the New Age. A copy of this can be found in the National Library of New Zealand. It can get confusing when book titles are changed in this way, but it was probably more fitting than a title that suggested it contained merely hints. Although Dr. Williams had humbly written in the 1930s that the scope of this book is indicated in its title, it is certainly instructive enough to provide the reader with a comprehensive way of living and a profound understanding of health. When we decided to put this book into print, consideration was given as to whether to modernise the format and style. Dr. Williams favoured a great deal of capitalisation in his writing, which may seem unusual in the present day, as he appears to be shouting at his readers. However, on reflection, we elected to maintain his literary style. If he was concerned about unhealthy lifestyles in the 1930s, it is almost certain that he would be shouting at us even more loudly in the 2020s. There is also a personal delight in allowing a buried voice to have a platform over 80 years later. By leaving the style as it was, Dr. Williams gets to speak again in his unique style, while his detractors are long since forgotten. The truth has a habit of surfacing, even if it takes time. While preserving most of his original content, there have been some updates to help the modern reader. Some of Dr. Williams' classifications and lists have been reorganised to make them clearer. Where more accurate and important information is now available, it has been added. What is most remarkable is how little needed changing, such as his timeless wisdom. His examples of 1930s medical follies have been left in place, as they are illustrative of many of the same erroneous health models that are still blindly followed today. The laws of God and the nature of biology cannot be changed by man. Dr. Williams' genius was in the distillation and communication of these principles to others. There are a large number of recipes in this book, which is appropriate given the emphasis that Dr. Williams placed on achieving health through diet. They are simple to follow, nourishing and practical, with the vital themes being readily apparent. Our diet should consist of foods that are provided by nature, with the avoidance of processes that deplete their nutritional value. By simply browsing through the recipes, you will see plenty of fruits and vegetables and unadulterated ingredients. It goes without saying that knowing where your food comes from is of the utmost importance. Dr. Williams was not averse to meat in the diet, although he would advise restricting the consumption during times of illness. There are no meat dishes amongst the recipes, apart from the unexpected appearance of a one savoury rabbit in the meat substitute section. Our family consumes meat regularly, and I am happy to leave others to work out their best balance. Raw milk and butter, however, are frequently employed in the recipes. If flour is being used, it should usually be wholemeal, while sweetening is achieved through raw sugar or honey. Puddings can be part of a healthy diet if they consist of such wholesome ingredients. One of my favourite recipes in this book is Welsh Nectar, a natural homemade soft drink with a delicious mouthfeel that cannot be replicated by commercial varieties. For readers outside the United Kingdom and Australasia, there may be a few unfamiliar terms. Marmite and Vegemite are potent food spreads made from yeast extract. They are jet black in colour and rich sources of vitamin B compounds. Wheat Bix is a popular breakfast cereal in Australasia, with a similar product in the UK and North America being Wheatabix. Granose flakes are now known as corn flakes, so this was updated in the recipe section. 
there are a few other old words that have been preserved to remind us of our heritage. Recipe measurements are mostly in the imperial system and brief on instructions. The idea is more about appreciating the principle of natural ingredients and eating minimally manipulated food. During his practicing career, Dr. Williams gave many popular public lectures and wrote to newspapers frequently. He campaigned against fluoridation of water supplies and was opposed to all vaccines, which he described as disgusting and disease producing. Such positions brought him into conflict with the British Medical Association, who expelled him as a member in 1936. Subsequently, a similarly outraged medical council failed in their attempts to have him struck off the register in the 1940s. This resonated with me due to the medical council's attempts to silence me after I went public in 2020 with regard to the COVID-19 fraud. However, unlike Dr. Williams, I had no desire to remain practicing within the medical system once I understood its nature. Last century, Dr. Williams wrote that the modern medical system, to the extent of perhaps 80%, is nothing but a gigantic, cruel, ludicrous, lucrative, transparent fraud. In my view, nothing has changed, except perhaps that 80% is now an underestimate of the fraud taking place. In the same article, he went on to state that doctors do not know what disease is, nor how it is brought about. Doctors completely unaware of their significance or purpose are taught that acute illnesses are acute diseases, which they must prevent or cure. With this object, they employ a battery of destructive agents, notoriously more dangerous than the ills they are supposed to cure. Poisonous drugs, vaccines, Radiation and mutilating surgery are their weapons. Perhaps the worst crime of modern medical so-called science is the increasingly effective suppression of acute illnesses. Usually successful suppression has one of four consequences. The sufferer is killed. A foundation is laid for chronic and often incurable disease. Nature, if she can, will after period intervals stage more of these would-be spring cleanings or healing crises. Nature may affect a cure in spite of treatment, in which case the doctor will claim and probably get full credit for recovery. While it may seem a harsh critique of our profession, I have come to realize the truth of it. When Dr. Barbara Starfield revealed in 2000 that around 225,000 patients were dying annually in US hospitals due to medical errors, it should have been one of the scandals of the century. Keeping in mind that this does not include the iatrogenic deaths and injuries happening outside the hospitals, it is clear that the medico-pharmaceutical industry has blood all over its hands. It is indeed only a medical system not a health system. Dr. Williams felt that governments had a role in promoting the health of the population and in his introduction to the fourth edition of Hints on Healthy Living, he provides a list of what governments should do. I suspect that if he was alive today, he may have lost faith in the notion of governments having any positive function in the health and well-being of the average person. Dr. Williams' insights into the wider picture were remarkable for his time. He condemned the debt-based financial system and was under no illusion as to who ultimately pulled the strings when he stated, Whosoever controls credit controls most else. It is most vitally urgent that the people as a whole should cooperate to govern themselves. And ultimately he said it was individuals who would determine what the ruling class did with them. We ourselves are to blame. Give the average man a crust and a corner of blanket, and he's satisfied. It is not because tyrants oppress them that the people are slaves, said a sage. It is because they are so abject that the powerful and unprincipled will inevitably exploit them. As his biographer, Bruce Hamilton, said in 1998, Ulrich Williams was an original thinker and a forceful personality and controversialist. Although regarded by many as a crank and fanatic, in his advocacy of a healthy natural way of living, methods of treatment, scepticism about unnecessary surgery and promotion of a diet of natural foods, he was perhaps ahead of his time. I would propose that Dr. Williams' advocacy is, in fact, timeless. 
He was informing us that if we simply respect the laws of nature and the laws of God, then health and prosperity will follow. At times in this book, it may seem that Dr. Williams is preaching in a puritanical fashion. However, he was not a supporter of organized religion in general, writing in one article that doctors are disease mongers and churches sin factories. And although in this book the word God appears over a hundred times, he was well aware of how easily this could be misinterpreted. That being so, he was known to say, People have so many misconceptions about this word that it is a barrier to communication. I try instead to use the words life in the life force. Life will bring you everything good as long as you trust it. It is a realization that we have everything we need and will be blessed when we place our trust in ourselves and our faith in the divine. Hints on healthy living brought so much wonderful wisdom to my family. And now, with my best wishes, I hope to pass Dr. Williams' wisdom on to you with this rekindled version called Terrain Therapy. If you would like to get a copy of Terrain Therapy, then there are a number of options at drsambailey.com forward slash terrain therapy. The paperback and hardcover versions are available through both the Lulu Bookstore and Amazon. If you would like to get an ebook, then currently you can buy it through the Lulu Bookstore. However, there is a Kindle version coming, which will be available on Amazon soon. Thank you for all your support. And for now, the final word goes to Elric Williams and one of his quotes in Terrain Therapy. The man that closes his mind to that which is strange or new is afraid. He dislikes untrodden paths. If you enjoyed this video, please visit supportdrsam.com 